So g'day guys, welcome back to Offbeat. I think this is um, episode five, the uh, show where we listen to music and uh, basically just uh, talk over it. But um, I'm joined here by a very special guest. Um, it's a friend of mine. Um, his name is Zaria. Zaria, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, cool. Uh, hey guys, my name is Zaria. I'm 21 and I'm just starting to make a bit of music and put it online. Yeah. All right. So um, what made you want to start making uh, making music? Um, I think like ever since I was a young kid, I used to play drums in church and I had this teacher, his name's Nathan, he used to always teach me after church. And I don't know what it was about drums, but just the fact that you could like make different sounds, but make it still sound cool. And like, I guess my personality, I don't really like rules, which is pretty bad, but mm -hmm. I, I love like not conforming. I love like randomness, but it still works. I think with music, there's just endless possibilities. Like you change one note and you'll get a whole different sound. So I think mean, that's just what draws me to music, just that there's no, like, it's so infinite. Mm. Well, I'm gonna get into your first song, which is uh, called "Bounce." But um, and what and what you're saying about um, sort of the infinite possibilities and sort of like you not necessarily wanting to conform to rules. I feel like you know beyond that, like a career in, in music, kind of it being a um. I don't really know how to describe, but I think we sort of I'd, I'd put it in the same sort of vein in what I'm doing. It's kind of very different to like you know doing a nine to five like. I don't know if I get my point across very well, but um, but I mean like, like we're not kind of really conform like in music and and, and like most creative pursuits, you don't really conform to like the um oh you finish school and then and then you get a job and not that there's anything wrong with that stuff but do you think a part, that's a part of it for you yeah i guess so like even in that lifestyle i feel like a lot of people just aren't very happy like while they do that stuff they just do it because that's what everyone expects you to do once you finish school you go and do that and if you don't do that then you're a bit weird and abnormal and maybe you're not like yeah fitting in with everyone you kind of outside the box and to me like i love that that's not the reason like why I did music but I think that's a side of it I love too like I love being there I love being like undefined in a way so yeah it works for me too I'd assume it's the same for you in the sense that you know I don't think you're doing what you do to prove people wrong but it's cool that you can stand out a bit be a little bit different sometimes yeah I like there's a I, like I'm a very competitive person so for me like there is an element of like wanting to say to people like like look I, I did it or I'm doing it like what are you gonna do about it sort of thing but um but yeah for the most part you're right like it's you know um yeah that that non-conforming part of it is, is huge for me and just working to my own clock which I'm sure is walking to the beat of your own drum actually is the best way I could put it I don't know if it's like that for you yeah um, so this is Jay Dilla Sunbeams, um, which is just an instrumental. I just, I love this instrumental, like, like one of my favorite beats. It's so chill. Um, but, but that song that, um, we just listened to, Bounce. So do you want to talk a little bit about like, what that's sort of about? Yeah. Um, I guess bouncing on lunch show is just like bouncing back from hard times, adversity, um, maybe just not being as happy in yourself, but realizing that you can actually bounce back. I think the whole premise of that song was, yeah, I was trying to write a song that was like pretty deep to me. Um, and it just wasn't like, it just didn't sound good. And I think, you know, especially in your line of work, you can agree that you're your biggest critic. Like you really spend time and thinking how it sounds and you go to every little detail and just the little things weren't adding up. So I just said, oh man, I'll make a song. I'll just try and make a new one. And I made that in like probably, 20 minutes, the beat was in 20 minutes and then mm. just finished it within a day or two and uploaded it. So yeah, it just was like about coming back, not being stuck really, just bouncing back. Um, but you were saying it doesn't sound right. When you say that, do you mean like, like you, you know, the, you rapping or like it just, what you were saying didn't feel right? I think not really what I was saying, but like how I was saying it. And I think in the song as well, the instrumental, the kind of sample that I used for it, 
it's very like hard hitting and what I'm talking about I kind of want to be serious with it so it'd be like good for like a high pop song but maybe in terms of what I'm trying to get across the two aren't really like matching yeah from what I like understand from listening to your music before um you don't do a lot of hype up songs like or is that something that you're gonna change like or is your style very much more mellowed out yeah I think I'd like the mellowed out style I think it kind of suits my personality a bit more um I feel like with hype songs they're all the same too like they, they're good mm. for hyping you up but they all very much especially in a lot of rap it's very like women drugs yeah all that kind of same you can't really bring something new to the table in that field um, so I guess with mine it's a bit more expressive it's a bit more deep as you'd say quote unquote but yeah that's just my style I think well I noticed that, like you know some of the music you know what like most of your music um, that I've listened to is um, sort of in the same vein as like where it seems like rap is going at the moment with like this new wave of sort of I, I, I don't want to call it indie rap but it kind of is you know like um, and you said something earlier um, about you going to um, you play, like started off playing the drums at church um, church is a pretty big part of your life right now is it? 100% yeah has it always been that way? nah not at all I think uh, so growing up uh, in high school like that was a huge part of me like I went to church every Sunday with my family um, but I never really enjoyed it hey like it was just a chore it was something that my family did so I had to tag along to so like the first chance I got when I moved out of home so I lived in Townsville grew up went to uni in Brisbane as soon as I got to Brisbane I was like man like I'm living for myself now I don't need to go to church on Sundays so I kind of stopped going um, but I think I just realized last year was like a pretty tough year you know despite corona and everything I had some pretty hectic stuff going on um, and I just felt like so low as a person like I just felt like an empty shell really I was just kind of existing, but I didn't like the person I was. And I wanted to change, but I didn't know how to change. So my best friend um, invited me to church one day and I was like, oh, like I'm used to it. It's not like a new environment for me. I know what goes down. So I might as well go. But something hectic happened. Like I went there first time, it was really good, loved the environment, so I went back again. And the second time, they were like what they were playing a song like worship songs and i was just standing there and like something in my gut was like rising and i was like dude what's going on and i felt like i was gonna cry i was like bro this is whack like i don't know any of these people i don't know like, i'm not gonna cry at this place but the more i tried to fight it the more it was like rising up and eventually it just got to a point where I was bawling my eyes out in front of all these random people. And I was like, bro, I felt so embarrassed. I was like, I had my head down. I was crying. I was like, bro, I don't want to be here right now. But my best friend was like the happiest I've ever seen. He smiled in like nearly a year. And like, everyone was giving me hugs. Everyone was coming over to me. I was like, I don't know you guys. Like, what are you doing? And I guess just that environment, the change. Ever since then, like, it changed. Like, it kind of. I'd say that's when God hit me or like it became real just because I had that experience one on one but yeah ever since then like church is a huge part of me now I think spirituality is a yeah, huge element in my life oh, yeah that's I mean that's pretty wild like that's the first story I've sort of heard about kind of I don't know what very fluidly finding religion kind of in a way you know what I mean or finding your way back in such a like a dramatic way that is really wild um we sort of talking a little bit about like mental health and I always notice like like one of my biggest things and like a lot of my close friends know like like that um well for one like mo a lot of people find like talking about mental health like really taboo and like that is like one of the most like like probably one of the, the few things in life like i hate is like just like how people like will treat you if like for being open so i always found that was sort of why like like when i when i started talking to you like when i first um first met you um i was like this dude's like 
really um like open but also like yourself kind of thing and, and i think that's really cool like why why do you think that is because of like christianity for you or just is that sort of how you've always been i'd say christianity is like definitely helped that for sure but i think for the most part it's just kind of my upbringing it's kind of my culture it's where i'm from I'm, i was born in nigeria and okay. in there there's there's no hiding like the whole the whole country is a community you know people mm. will come over to your house at like 9 p.m at night without even asking for that like any warning they'll just knock and you'll be like oh come in like family like it's a whole community kind of environment so when you're really down you share it with people not in the hopes of you know i just need it off my chest but like in the sense that we all care for one another we all want to build each other up we all want to grow so i guess that's like where it stems from but i guess in christianity as well like i think nowadays christianity is seen as like a very hateful or very um I was, it has a pretty bad rap i won't lie it's got a pretty bad rap <laughs> it's for sure and i think the only reason it has that bad rep is because people think that just because you identify as a christian that you are somehow Jew, you are somehow perfect but i don't think that's it at all i think by being a christian you just identify that you kind of struggle in a lot of ways and everyone's struggling and you're just trying to be better um that's just the way i see it so i guess when bring it back to what you said i think it's a responsibility to help other people out as much as you can because we all know life's hard life hits you so it's so much easier when you're walking through it with someone else rather than like going by yourself. Mm. I just think, yeah, no, I, I totally agree. Um, I just want to interject that we were listening to Breaking Point earlier, um, which is one of Zari's songs, and we're now listening to uh, Waystar by, by Rubber, which is one of my favorite samples. But um, yeah, no, um, um, you being from Nigeria, like, when did you come here? Because I actually didn't even know that. <laughs> um, yeah, I was born in Nigeria. I uh, lived there for two years. Left there, went to Japan for three years. Went to Tasmania for, like, ten years. So I did most of my primary school and, like, middle school in Tasmania. Tasmania is not real. <laughs> so it's not a real place. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> hectic people. Um, but... Yeah, I went to Townsville for like three years, um, then Brisbane, obviously, and then back. So I came to Australia in 2005. Yeah. Um, why did you leave Nigeria? Hmm, that's a good question. Because honestly, we had a pretty good life in Nigeria, despite, you know, I think there's a lot of stigma as well with Africa. Like you hear Africa and the first thing that comes to your mind is like world vision probably mm. no drinking water which kind of sucks because like my mom used to cry when we came to australia because that was the only thing she would see of home like she left the country she'd come on the tv and the only images she'd see is like kids with flies around their faces and she just was like heartbreaking because she's like that's not mm. where we're from um we had a really like well my parents did i was two but they had a really good business and like yeah community was incredible but i think my dad's kind of like you, very competitive. He just doesn't like being put in a box. He wants to achieve the most that he can. Um, so he was from like a village. I went to where he grew up. My dad's like a celebrity there because like he's the only person who's gone overseas. And just seeing where he grew up was like so life-changing for me. Because he started from, you know, people say they start from nothing, but like literal nothing, I went there. And um, mm -hmm. so he just wanted to push himself, I think. He just wanted to achieve a lot. So he loves like farm animals. He grew up on a farm. So he does a lot of research in terms of, you know, how to make better meat, how to make um, better wool, like that kind of stuff. So, yeah. Is he still farming? No, he's not farming at the moment. He just does more like clinical trials or like research with livestock and just like the more kind of science, agriculture side, you know, what kind of stuff can we put in their food to get better meat and stuff like that. Yeah. Hmm. I always found a really strange thing for me at least. And I actually um, read somewhere, uh, but we was talking about how um human beings especially especially males are at their happiest doing hands-on jobs that are related to 
um, things like agriculture and like nature. Like it sounds really strange. Uh, like it's obvious that like if you're surrounded, you know, you're living very naturally, you're probably going to be happier if you're, you know, surrounded by lakes and rivers the whole time. But like they were sort of talking about one of the, the guys, self proclaimed happiest man on the planet was a guy who lived in the woods hunting rabbits um that was like eating the crop so uh, sorry eating the garden of a um a rich guy who had a big mansion there and apparently he was one of the happiest people on the planet just because he just had this sort of like i don't know like small natural like job that like just hunting you know it doesn't get like more primitive than that and they were saying that that contributed like so positively to his mental health and i remember like um when I went um, camping once with a bunch of bunch of friends, like, um, like I just cracked. Like I went, I pretty much went crazy. I've done that a few times in my life. Like, like, like stupid mental breakdowns over like stuff that like does not matter. Um, um, and um, I like got a heap of wood and I just started chopping wood, <laughs> and I recovered like really quickly. Like, like I was like, I was like gathering firewood and I was like putting it in like, you know, like. Mm more wood and you know like chopping it up and and like and like i was so happy doing it and enjoying it and i just think that's so weird <laughs> that that's like poss very possibly a thing like i don't know but but to what you were sort of saying um i'm sure it's my audio doesn't mix very well but um but um yeah to what you were you were saying earlier about sort of like the world's view of Africa and it not being the case that's actually very new to me like I, I had no clue that uh, well, why why is like like what what has contributed to the fact that like the world just assumes that Africa is full of poor starving people like I think because there is truth in that I'm not here to say like there's no poor people like it is yeah like and I wouldn't even say Africa too, because like that's like grouping the whole continent. Yeah, there's like, like hundreds of countries in there, isn't there? Or yeah, it's fifty something. Yeah. yeah, so yeah. I think maybe it's because like that is that element is there, but like there's a thing in psychology called like negative dominance. So whenever you see mm. something negative, it actually trumps all the good inside of it. Like, say you put a picture on Instagram and you feel like you're popping, like you're loving how you look. And like 50 people are like, bro, you look good. And there's that one like joker who's like, oh, bro, you look whack, your arms look small. You'll focus on mm. that one comment rather than the 50 other good ones you got. Like that'll just ruin the mood. Even though you got 50 mm. nice comments, you got 100 likes, that one negative comment is gonna like ruminate in your mind. And I think that's what so, happens. Yeah. What about, um, like, so what? what is negative dominance exactly? Like, is that just the fact that you'll ruminate over the one percent that you know like that one insult over the 30 comments or is that or is negative dominance got something to do with that person deliberately like negating you i think it's more so just the negative outweighs the positive it's just it will take up more of your mental capacity oh right yeah so like bringing it back that to the africa yeah if you there is that negative side of it so that overshadows any good that comes from there so because mm. there is such and it's a strong negative too like like poverty and people dying is like a huge thing but that just trumps any kind of good that comes out of there too mm. um sorry just gotta jump in again one of the criticisms i got for the show was that um i never said what songs were playing this is fall in love brackets your funeral by Erica Badu. Um, it's another song that's been sampled a few times. Um, but yeah, no, that's um, that's actually really interesting. Because um, yeah, I've always sort of, yeah, just assumed the absolute worst of the African continents. <laughs> I like, just because of like the depiction of it on TV. But it's interesting like how much that shapes people's um, opinions of things. Like, like, like America, you know, gr growing up, you know, when I was a kid and my dad showed me like a lot of, um, a lot of movies I should not have been fucking watching. Um, and you'd see like, you know, the badass, like American soldiers in the war. Like when I was a kid, I wanted to join the army because I was watching like 
like virtual, virtually like U.S. propaganda, um, and it like shaped my view of America. It's like this like glorious country. Like I think I wanted to be American as a kid, and it's like that is like the furthest thing to, from the truth. When I went to America, I went to American high school. It's like borderline shocking, but it's crazy like how like you know you can just get your opinion of something like shaped without in, in such an impressionable age without you realizing. Hundred percent. I think that's why. You know, social media and everything is so dangerous in our day and age because someone can just have an agenda, put it out as this is what's going down, and no one, you know, takes that knowledge to be like, all right, let me find out. Let's actually like put some research into it. It's so much easier to just say like, oh, I read this thing on Facebook. That's true, mm. rather than you spending the time to actually look into both the pros and cons of it and coming to a decision. And I guess maybe bringing it back to Christianity, that's what kind of made me stay in there because. I was like, all right, I have this negative depiction of it. I see these again, negative dominance, like bad examples of Christians that kind of ruin it for all the good Christians as well. But I think once I had my own kind of take on it, and I, I just wanted to find out for myself, I was like, all right, this is something I can get down with. But yeah, I think it's very dangerous to just have your ideas shaped by everyone else. Your Christianity um, points made me feel like a bit of a hypocrite. <laughs> Because I was, just, I was just thinking, I was like, I was like, I just revealed that, like, yeah, like the, um, what's it called? Like the view of Christianity is not overwhelmingly positive all the time, and I haven't actually gone to church in about in, in years, like probably since I was a kid, I would say. Um. So this is Sarah, Sarah Serendipity, <laughs> sorry. I was reading it in the small writing. Um, do you want to talk about, well, the meaning of the songs on the album cover, right? <laughs> yeah. So, so what was your serendipity? Great right, music, for sure. Yeah. So serendipity basically just means like, it's something really good that you just find by accident. So like a good relationship, you know, if you don't really look for someone, but someone just comes into your life and just confidence it, like that's serendipity. So for me, it was music. Like, I remember, as I was saying, when I had that really rough period last year, um, I bought this keyboard last year, um, no, two years ago now, and I never really touched it. But during that time, I like started playing it. And for some reason, as you were saying with that primal, when you were carrying wood, you just felt like calmed you down. For me, that was yeah, like, and that was my wood, bro. That was like me calming me down. I was like, I find it, I find it so funny that your version of that is like creating like beautiful music, and my version of that was chopping shit up. <laughs> no, but that, that makes a lot of sense, though. Hmm. Well, did you did you get the feeling that like this is what I should be doing? Kind of like, and I think tying it all up, that happiest man alive. I think the only reason he's happy is because he is doing what he was born to do, like in a way, like designed and created for. He is created to hunt yeah. rabbits. Like that's a tight little niche, but he's doing what he's created for, and that's why he loves it. I'm sure with you, like film, you found what you love doing. What you know, I'm not sure about you, this, but for me, with music, time stops. Like. Time like in everything i'm looking at the clock like is this done is this over with music like i will lose myself in it for hours and come out and be like oh dude it's been three hours That's crazy. so i think the happiness that everyone seeks is like doing what you design purpose for and i guess that's the issue with doing that nine to five is that that's someone for someone that's great like i'm not saying nine to five is bad but for someone that's awesome mm. but for a lot of people it's not what you were going to predict I agree. Yeah, I agree a hundred percent with um with everything you've sort of said there. Um, like, you know, on that on that last part, you know, the nine to five, like, like there is absolutely nothing wrong with, you know, having a nine to five. There's nothing wrong with um, like being, you know, being a, you know, collecting garbage, being a tradie, being a corporate worker. Um, but yeah, I, I think a lot of people do find themselves trapped in like. A job like that because they like in jobs you know especially in like the corporate world because like that's what they have to do they had to graduate and you know oh well, now i gotta work and it's like they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing and they're pretty unhappy unhappy for that reason um and like i think like most people know as well you know but i don't think everyone knows that like you can just 
do Whoa. things you know like like yeah. you're actually not really confined by much you know i mean as you get older and older you get more and more responsibilities but like you know to be like our age like you know if you if you want to like make music like just make make music just record on your phone you know start off like there's actually really no, no reason why people like shouldn't I, I really do feel like i don't know this is like this like, there's like a psychological like phenomena that I hate. That's a, I know, that's no that I like. Um, where it's saying like if you talk really really vaguely about a really really big topic, it says more about you than it says about the topic. Um, and I feel like that's what I'm doing right now. Um, just I wasn't expecting I wasn't expecting to take it here, and I haven't really thought a lot about what I'm trying to say. But um, the yeah, sort of coming across as like a like. A pseudo motivational speaker right here. But, um, <laughs> um, there was something I did. Oh, that part where you were talking about losing yourself in music. Like to me, that's really beautiful. Um, I actually can't relate, which is interesting for me. Like I, I've never lost my. I don't think I've ever lost myself in a in a project. Um, and I think I think my mentality towards film is, is almost it's, it's probably like kind of too violent um, so I, I, well, I, I declare war on things you know like that's sort of how I've always operated that, like it hasn't been healthy like well, you know my whole life like but this is sort of the one area where it has helped me is you know I know it seems I, like I want to get where I want to go and like, you know, anything that stands in my way, I like, will just, I don't know, like I've burnt bridges over, you know, like bridges I think deserve to be burnt, but over like places I wanted to be and like getting, getting stopped doing that. But I think that's like not what it's about when it comes to creating like i think i've taken a very business like approach to a very uh i don't really know how to describe it but a, a methodical approach to something that's supposed to be anything but methodical right would you would you say you do what you do for like yourself for your own kind of self growth or is there like a bigger reason behind it to actually like you just want to prove people wrong you want to say all right i want to do this and i want to get it done but do you actually like feel like you're created to make film i think i was created to make films like i don't remember a time when when i um like i, I remember being a kid and like making up movie plots to my friends and saying like i'm going to direct that one day and then i remember i used to play lego and i used to build like like I used to love, um, you know, action, thriller, horror -y type stuff. So I would just make up like the most like fucked up like Lego, um, like city or town or something where like just the shits like hit the fan, and I'd like make a plot out of it. And like I always feel like it was what I meant to do, but I don't know. I think I just like just one too many times like. Um, I don't know, maybe got told that it was not going to happen and maybe that's where the sort of methodical approach came in and that's why it might seem a little bit like I do it for, um, you know, others rather than myself, but I do do it for myself. Mm. Um, I just want to I just want to warn you really quickly that we're at the 29 minute mark. Uh, so if we want to get into the beat making now. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I'll run you through the process of like how I make my tracks. So normally I think yeah. now, I like doing a lot more boom bap type of stuff. Um, I love boom bap, so that um, that work for me. That works fine. All right, so normally I start with like, I'll go with the keys just because you can kind of layer the drums around the music a bit better. So you go to FL, uh, get this E piano sound. That. You and then I like to put a little bit of reverb on it so it sounds a bit more spacey. So right now it sounds like this. If I chuck reverb on it, it'll sound like this. It's a bit more floaty. Yeah, no, that's a lot nicer, yeah. So um, normally you just find the BPM that you kind of want. So because it's boom back, you want it a bit slow. So like... It's 
So like 86 is kind of like, I normally go 80, but we can, I might go 85. Um, so I'll record just what the piano will sound like. So there's like a simple little progression. And then it will just restart. Um, so mm. I'll record that in. And that piano, um, is that just a synth or something or is this actually a sample? No, no, no. So I'm playing it now. I've got a little keyboard. Okay, so this is totally from scratch. Yeah, this is right. I've got a little MIDI keyboard, so I'm just playing it on that. Uh, Sweet. Record this. Perfect. So that's the loop. That's pretty sick. I actually... I actually like that a lot. Yeah, it's a simple little like, cause it uses a bit of major nines and stuff. It keeps it a bit more bouncy and flary. So, so I come in, so now normally this is the fine tuning part. Just for me, like you can quantize your stuff so it all falls in on this grid and it sounds real nice. Some people don't like quantizing, especially with boom bat, because it's very like, you want that kind of rock with it. But I, I think it just sounds a lot better if everything is snapped on grid. Uh, yeah, I yeah. hate that little, I'm a bit of a perfectionist as well. So when things are just a little bit off, it throws the whole thing out of whack for me. It's like these. Yeah. There we go. All right. And just chuck the metronome on to see how it will sound. So if you chuck that metronome, you can kind of tell that some notes are just just a tiny bit off, but it'll throw the whole thing off. So bear with me just as I like go through and just snap this all on grid. So that's the main stuff. It's just these big ones that you want on grid. The other little ones you can leave for like just a little bit of bounce. So, so when you say... All right. So that's the main stuff. It's just these big ones that you want on grid. The other little ones you can leave for like just a little bit of bounce. So when you say on grid, just mean so they're like exactly on time yeah exactly so. on that four so you know like that one two three yeah. four on that four is when you'll hear it come through um so people with boom bap don't mind if they're a little bit off because it's a bit raw or something yeah so i'll show you especially when i make the drums so that's that's the main pattern down so we play that that's our pattern down turn that metronome off so it's on grid now. So now if I add the drums, let's so come here. And this is the fun part. This is what I love, man. Cause like, um, you download your kits online. I found this one on Reddit. Mm. It's got a hundred of like every kind of drum sound that you want. So there's endless Damn. possibilities that you can make with this. And you kind of just go through with what sounds nice. So normally I like to like play it in the background and then tap with my like, you can hear the sounds sampled. So just hear what kind of sounds good. I already like this controller sound. So, um, and then I also like to, so if you see here, this is like a four bar region. With my drums, mm. I like to make them all four bars. Cause what you can normally do is default, it will just make it a one bar region. And that's just mm. like real repetitive if you have that throughout the whole song. But if you have a four bar, you can kind of alternate a few bits here and there and it makes it sound yeah. good. So I'll show you what I mean by that kind of offbeat stuff, not on grid. So right now all these hi-hats are on Grid. So with the with the piano, it sounds like this. But with the boom back kind of style, you know it's a bit more head boppy. It's more rocky. So if we literally just center it just a tiny bit off grid, okay, yeah, move it just a little bit like this, you'll hear it's a whole different sound. Okay. Yeah, I see what you mean. So it's a bit more laggy and it allows a bit more kind of headroom to come in. So if we find our yeah. snare sound that we want as well. So with like boom bap, I kind of look for stuff that's not too, these are all very like sharp sounds. You kind of want like something a little bit chill. Maybe like this kind of sprinkle. So maybe something a bit more hitting. This is a bit that's annoying for me because I'm a perfectionist. So unless 
I need to find something that sounds really, really good. So we've got like a boom back clap anyway. We'll just use that for now. And just fill each note. So you can kind of hear that groove kind of come through. Mm. And with most boom baps, you have like an open hat. So I like just the chill kind of... It needs to be short, but not too loud. We'll try this. So this comes on the offbeat on each time. You hear it sounds. So it kind of has that. And then lastly, the, the best bit of it all is the kick. So this is what really like drives it. And you kind of just want like a simple, I like this kick clean. And normally with the kicks, I like to like click it with my key in times of the beat. And then I'll just match it up on the sequence play here. So so something like that. So I know what, what I want to sound and then I just, pl I literally just paint it in here. But the thing is, cause it's like not on grid, this is what it sounds like on grid. See, it's a bit more like rigid. It doesn't have that bounce. So now if we come to the kick and we go to the piano roll where the kick is, now we can kind of move it just that little bit off grid and it will have that kind of bounce now. Hang on. Um, so if we come back down to the kick, we'll just add this full thing and I'll just loop just a one bar loop of the kick. So all you got to do is just copy and paste this over. And this will just carry on through the rest of the song. Perfect. And then normally with my drums, I just split it by channel so you can have each individual element. So that just means like you can bring in just a clap or just a hat. So if we just want without the kick and without the hi-hat, we just have these elements. Yeah, I was about to say, you can, what's the word, uh, ease into it. Yeah, exactly. And then the, literally the last thing, I do two more things, but we'll just, we'll just do one just for this example, as I normally like to add um, just like a lead sound that comes on top. So um, I like this sound just because it's pretty unique. I've never heard a sound kind of like this. I'll turn this down a bit. It's a strange kind of like electronic funky sounds. So what I normally do is I put this song, I'll play it in the background and then I'll just mess around until I find what key it's in. I don't know my music theory too well, I'm still kind of working on that. So I just play around until I know what key and then I just make up a little instrumental lead to go with it. So. So I know what keys it's in and I'll just record. That was really impressive to watch. <laughs> hey, so I just record this four bar loop. You can see what I'm playing in this little piano section down here. Yeah. But I'm literally just making this up as I go. So that's literally it. And I'll just like, I can go through and snap this on grid as well. You kind of want these on grid as well. Otherwise it sounds really whack um, without it. But I'll just leave it just for the sake of the time. Um, and I don't like putting it at the start. At the start, you kind of just want this plain little intro just to get a feel of what's gonna sound like. You can bring the this one in next, just so you have that lead, and then bring everything on top. And pretty much that's it. Like, it sounds a bit raw now because everything's out of place, but that's basically it. And then for lyrics, um, unless I have like a song that I really, like I have an idea before I start, I'll have lyrics already made, but most of the time I just freestyle. And yeah, I just, if I like what I hear in the freestyle, I'll like record those lyrics and try and even it out so it sounds good, but I normally just freestyle my track, so I'll do a quick little, hopefully this goes out well, it might be a huge flop, but do you have a word mm -hmm. you can give to me for the freestyle? Um, um, do you want, uh, is there a topic you want to keep it on or? Look, I'm easy. We can go to something like Zoom. Yeah, yeah. Wood cutting. <laughs> wood cutting? All right. <laughs> yeah, how's that? That's fine, bro. So I'll just set up my mic. You can hear me now. I'll turn that off. All right. So mic set is primed, it's ready to go. So wood cutting. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I can do a different one of you. 
No, no, no. That's so good. We can see, like that's the thing. It's just random. This might be a flop, yeah. but we'll we'll have fun doing it anyway. So, all right. Mm, yeah. I'm cutting wood. You know I would. I'm doing everything I said I should. I just wanna keep it clean, keep it choosy, keep it nice. Everybody looking at me, feeling like some rice. Cook it up in the pot, yeah, easy. I'm just looking right now, you just see me on your TV. I'm just like this, one, two, three, with the man Reese. Every single day, yeah, I get this little piece, huh? Damn, that was smooth. To, to be honest, I hate that, but <laughs> like, that's <laughs> just how it goes and then from there if i like like i actually like that little reese and peace bit with that reese's pieces i can do a word play with that so i write it in my notes and then come up with something that you know it kind of sounds good isn't too whack isn't too corny and a full song is made so if you want to listen to like this is the new one that i can't i won't say this just for the experimental purpose so reese video so i say in the future if i want to work on that but this is the latest one i've been working on um, is this a beat or has this got lyrics too? It's got lyrics too, yeah. But I'm Sweet. still, I just need to finish up the lyrics. For this song, I just heard some birds outside my window and I was like, dude, that sounds mad. So I got some bird sounds on YouTube and I just downloaded it and I chucked them in here. And this is the track. Diversify your portfolio. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Uh, we moving with caution. We party much bigger than Boston. So this is the tea. I'd say follow me, but I am exhausted. On top of that nauseous. I'm counting my wins and my losses. Seems like to me, we swimming in deep. The progress is halted. My lord is exalted. My shoulders are broad. I'm never insulted. I'm feeling assaulted though. Back on the wall. I'm fighting alone. I'm right in my zone. I'm not like the rest. They call me the isotope. Life is the pain. God is the antidote. Feeling like fish. Never go hard to choke. Everybody asking, yeah, they feeling so entitled. Way too hard up on myself. I am my biggest rival. Need to ground myself. I need to read more of my Bible. Never go to war, but if you step, I grab this rifle. I'm standing up to my my giants i'm waiting on for this triumph i'm smarting all of these tyrants quiet down i need silence like uh, let me think mama's got no kinks cut down some drinks but that would cause conflict so i stay in my lane i'm running the game i'm running the fame and that's pretty much it i need to fix that last bit up but yeah that's the track so far that was pretty sick i like that one uh, a very like mac miller beat but there's some bars in there i don't I don't know how I feel about the artichoke line. <laughs> As I said, the yeah, lyrics need to get to work, but like this, that's the whole process. I never really take it too serious. I think once I start taking mm. it serious, it kind of ruins the kind of, it ruins the whole point of why I make music. Like I just do it because I enjoy it. I lose myself in it. So if I try and get it real serious, like, you know, it needs to have, lines need to sound great. This needs to happen. I kind of lose that mm. kind of you know, feel good vibe of it all. So yeah, so that's pretty much the process of it all. Thanks for joining me on that. 